Welcome back and welcome to section three, reliability and performance efficiency. So let's take a look at what we're going to learn in this section. So first of all, we're going to take a look at failure detection and how we can recover from failures automatically. Next, we'll move on to change management and have a look at how we can effectively respond to changes in demand. Next, we'll look at performance optimization and how we can make effective use of cloud resources. And finally, we're going to take a look at how we can dynamically resize resources based on demand. So let's jump right into the content. Welcome to video one, failure detection. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can respond automatically to failures in our infrastructure. First of all, let's get an understanding of the context in which we're talking about failures. So let's have a quick look at a very high level architecture for AWS using EC2 instances as a good example. So AWS is broken down into multiple regions. Each of those regions represents a specific geographical zone. So for example, the East Coast of the United States, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Asia, Pacific, etc. So each region is actually a grouping of data centers within a specific country. So for example, we have the US East Coast, we have two East Coast regions, US East 1 and US East 2, and they're based in two different states and two different cities in the US on the East Coast. For us EU users, we have three regions. We've got one in Ireland, one in London, and one in Frankfurt. Now, within each of those regions, there are multiple availability zones. And the way to think about an availability zone is a bit like a data center. And each of those data centers, or each of those availability zones, are connected together by very, very high, high throughput, low latency networking. So what Amazon want you to do is treat the interconnect between availability zones as the same as the interconnect between servers within a given data center. So they're connected very, very high throughput networking and as low latency as possible. So it's very similar to connecting to servers within a data center. Now, there are a number of services that are considered multi-AZ or region level services. And those are things like CloudWatch and auto-scaling. So whereas you define an EC2 instance, or when you configure an EC2 instance, you define the availability zone you want it to run in within a given region. With CloudWatch, for example, and the Elastic Load Balancer, you just say which region you want to run that service in. You don't actually specify an availability zone. And there's a very good reason for this. So when we think about an EC2 instance, it's actually made up of a number of components. Firstly, we have ephemeral storage. So that's local instance storage on the actual hardware that the VM is running on. We have EBS storage, which is, stands for elastic block storage. So that's network block based storage. We have security groups, which are essentially the virtual firewalls that protect our EC2 instances. And all of these work together to provide a virtual machine or a virtual operating system within which you can run your application. Now, as shown by this diagram, all of these sit within an availability zone. Another service, for example, that sits outside an availability zone is Amazon S3. And S3 can be used to back up your EBS volumes. So Amazon S3 actually spans multiple availability zones within a given region. So when you launch an EC2 instance, you choose an EBS volume you want it to be backed by or an ephemeral storage volume you want it to be backed by. Uh, now people are actually phasing out ephemeral storage volumes in favor of EBS because it can be used across multiple EC2 instances. And when you boot that volume for the first time, you actually select an Amazon machine image you want to boot from. And of course you can make changes to that AMI and you can then snapshot your EBS volume and copy it back to Amazon S3. So that means that if an availability zone were to fail, you still have a snapshot of your boot volume stored in Amazon S3 in another availability zone within that region. So CloudWatch is actually continuously monitoring your infrastructure and providing you with alerts when things go wrong. So if the hardware fails that your underlying instance is running on, you'll receive an alert to tell you that's happened. If an availability zone fails and the whole data center is knocked out, you'll also be provided with an alert to tell you that that's happened. And because CloudWatch is running regional level, it can provide you notifications about availability zone failure. So CloudWatch is always monitoring your infrastructure and you can configure alerts for when things fail. So just a quick recap, what is CloudWatch? Well, CloudWatch is a centralized logging, logging and monitoring service for your application and all of your infrastructure. It triggers alerts based on events. And as we discussed previously, you can actually trigger actions and code based on those alerts. And that's really, really important for the context of this section. And we're going to see why in just a few moments time. Because it allows you to automatically respond to events 
as well as exceptions. And this is very, very important for auto scaling. CloudWatch also lets you define metrics, actions, and resource groups. And when a metric or threshold is breached, an action can be triggered, for example, when we want to auto scale, to add additional resources to a resource group. You can also generate some kind of alert, email, SMS, push notifications, etc. Or as we discussed previously, you could trigger some code to recover from failure. So you could run a Lambda that spins up some other resource. You could run a Lambda to change a security group. You could run a Lambda to modify a load balancer config, etc. So if you define a resource group, you can actually also set a lower bound on resources. So if a compute instance fails, CloudWatch will automatically replace it. Likewise, if an availability zone fails, CloudWatch will automatically replace failed hosts with new ones in another availability zone within the same region. So how does auto-scaling work? Well, this is one of the most clever things about cloud computing, and one of the things that people really get excited about when they start moving their applications to the cloud. So what does this look like? Well, first of all, imagine we're running our application inside some Docker containers. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Docker, it's similar to a virtualization technology, uses something called Unix containers, and it allows you to a very lightweight, very easy to move unit of computation that contains all of your dependencies that you can ship and move around between servers. So we don't need to worry for this example what container is or what Docker does, but let's just imagine it's an easily deployable copy of our application. So we have some Docker containers running on EC2 instances in an auto scaling group that we've defined. In each of those EC2 instances, or each of the Docker containers on those EC2 instances, is exposing an API, a REST API, a RESTful service. Now, traffic into our service should never go directly to those EC2 instances. It should go via Amazon's Elastic Load Balancer. So when a user connects to our application, they first actually connect to the load balancer. They've got no knowledge of these instances running behind it. They connect to the load balancer, and the load balancer will pick an available instance and redirect the traffic to that instance. So your request comes in like this, and your response comes back like this. Now, if we've created an auto scaling group, Amazon CloudWatch is constantly monitoring that auto scaling group for performance metric and thresholds. So what you can do is say, I don't want the CPU percentage or CPU utilization on any of my instances to ever exceed 80%. And CloudWatch will take that as an auto scaling rule, and you can then define an action that occurs when that metric is breached. So imagine uh, the load on your web service uh, spikes overnight, you become very, very popular, and the traffic to your web service increased by a factor of 10. Amazon CloudWatch, the CPU threshold on your EC2 instances, has breached 80% over the past five minutes. For example, you can configure that. And then it's going to trigger the action that you define when that occurs. And that action can be to add another instance. And you can say to CloudWatch, keep adding one instance every n minutes, so every 10 minutes, until the average CPU utilization of my instances is less than 50%. And Amazon will keep adding instances until that happens. So automatically scale out your web service layer horizontally in order to demand. And then the clever thing is, as those services come up, the auto scaling group will automatically register them with the load balancer. So the load balancer can start directing traffic off to those new instances. Now this is fantastic for scaling out, but what about when your traffic demands subside? Well, likewise, you can set a metric for a lower threshold. So you can say when the average CPU utilization of my instances is less than 50% over a 10 minute period, remove one instance every five minutes until that's not the case anymore. So this allows your auto scaling group to scale not only out, but also back in again. So what about if a data center failures? Well, each AWS region contains two or more data centers or availability zones. And as we discussed previously, some services are AZ agnostic. Services like Route 53 for DNS, CloudWatch, and the Elastic Load Balancer. So when a region fails, ELB will automatically start routing traffic to available instances, and CloudWatch will know that those instances have failed and automatically replace those failed instances with new ones in the new in one of the remaining availability zones. As we can see here, example region is made up of multiple availability zones, and all of these are connected together directly. So in order to recover from the failure of a data center or an availability zone automatically, there's a few things we need to do. Firstly, we can leverage AZ agnostic services, things like S3, DynamoDB, the Elastic Load Balancer, CloudWatch, Simple queue service, etc. 
We can push all web traffic through an Elastic Load Balancer. We can make sure that we put all EC2 instances in an auto scaling group with instances sitting in at least two availability zones within a given region. That means that if instances in one AZ fail, uh, CloudWatch will automatically replace them with instances in one of the remaining good availability zones. And when an AZ fails, all instances in that AZ fail. So CloudWatch will know that the availability zone is down. It will know that all instances in that AZ will fail and it will automatically replace them with new ones in one of the remaining AZs. So what about if the worst happens and an entire region fails? Well, Amazon have thought of this too. You can use something called Route 53, Amazon's managed DNS service. And Route 53 actually happens at a global level. So it's a global service. So even if a region fails, Amazon Route 53 will still be operating from one of the other regions. So how do we handle this? Well, we need to asynchronously replicate our data across multiple regions. And Amazon has tools baked in for Amazon RDS, the relational database service, for S3 and for DynamoDB to support this. You then use geographic routing or a geographic routing rule and deploy your application into multiple regions. And if an entire region fails, simply leverage a CloudWatch alarm to trigger some Lambda code which then updates your Route 53 entry to redirect traffic to one of the remaining regions. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like this, a little bit complicated, but an extremely highly available architecture. So up the top here, and the entry point into our application is something called CloudFront. So Amazon CloudFront is Amazon's content delivery network, or CDN, and all of your users will hit CloudFront endpoints around the world. And Amazon has around 60 caching endpoints 60 caching CloudFront endpoints around the world, deployed in major internet through fares, routes, and switching points, such as Telecity in London, global crossings, data centers, etc. And the goal of this is to reduce the latency of accessing your content on AWS. So, what's going to happen is when a user wants to, to find your content, the first of all, their web browser is going to have to do a DNS lookup with Route 53. And you def what you'll do is you'll define a geographic routing rule in Route 53, which routes them to the most appropriate location, be that the closest elastic load balancer or the closest CloudFront edge location. The traffic will then get routed through that elastic load balancer to an available instance in an auto scaling group, exactly as we've described previously. And this example here shows a multi tier application. So, for example, your API call comes in, resolves via Route 53 comes in through the Elastic Load Balancer. The Load Balancer routes that traffic to an available web instance in an auto scanning group. That instance may then call an internal Elastic Load Balancer, which calls some backend service, which is hidden away from the internet, which retrieves some data from a database. So for example, if we're using RDS, we can asynchronously replicate our data from the master to read replicas and standby instances in other availability zones. In the background, what we can be doing is actually snapshotting that database every five minutes to an S3 bucket. That S3 bucket remembers in a specific region. However, Amazon S3 supports cross-region replication. So you can then be replicating that data to an S3 bucket in another region, which is running an exact mirror of your infrastructure. So then what happens if a region fails, you can trigger a function, update this Route 53 record, to say US East 1 is no longer available. So Route 53 will stop directing any DNS calls to US East 1 and redirect all traffic to the Elastic Load Balancer in US East 2, where hopefully you've got a hot spare of all of your infrastructure running. So actually, you can not only uh, cater for data center failure, you can actually cater for region level failure. So the biggest region, US East 1, I think is made up of five or six availability zones. Imagine running an application that runs in five or six availability zones, all of them fail, and you don't lose any traffic or any data. Everything comes up in another region and it carries on working as before. Now this would be pretty much impossible to do in an enterprise environment and is one of the really cool things about cloud computing. So the motto of all of this is build for failure. Amazon strongly encourage you to assume that anything and everything can and will break at any time. So make use of some of these technologies assume that things are going to break, and then you'll be sitting happy when data centers in regions fail and your application doesn't miss a beat.